So the, the three types of, of web data um, that people use for collecting data for their web analytics are what, what is typically or you know, historically uses web logs from servers, right, where servers, they'll just peel off web logs. That's where you know, many people started with years ago. Uh, the, the goodness of that data is it's very rich and very detailed. The badness is messy and high volume, and it's hard to parse. And so what people have done over the years is build uh, technologies and processes to you know, filter and process that data and put it into some sort of data model or data structure or multiple of them. And so there's a set of companies who do that, and, and some of them, you know, had done it many years ago, and some of them are not scaling well because of all the, you know, like, for example, pearl processing to uh, filter the, the web logs. So what we need to understand is, are they using that approach? Another approach that people have used are web log, web analytics companies like Omniture and Core Metrics and Web Trends. And many times or most times this is initiated from the marketing organization where the marketing people need something very quick and dirty. Uh, the nice thing about those tools is you place tags on your website and uh, they, you know, all the data is redirected to them. They do all the heavy lifting in terms of processing all the raw logs and what the end users get is just some nice clean report that give them metrics on page views and unique visitors and pathing and they have some nice visual tools that show paths through the site. Um, so those are the two primary ones and we need they have you know, the data is different and we need to when you talk to them understand what they're doing with their raw logs that they're pulling from web servers and what their infrastructure looks like. Um, and from the web analytics companies understand the data, and obviously we understand all that well because we have the adapter. And then the third one is a new one by Speedtrap, and I, I think they've got some patents on it too, by the way, but uh, it's a browser-based, so while typical tagging that you get from Omniture is uh, what I call server-based, is the server kind of processes the HTML, finds a piece of code, and then reads does a call to the Omniture, for example, data collection services to pass that data. The speed trap approach is a, what they call a browser base, where essentially they take a piece of, they put a tag on a page, which is a JavaScript. When your browser reads it, it takes that code, puts it in its own cache, and then essentially using your computer to send data back to the collection server. And uh, so those are the three types that we, you know, we just need to be aware of. The two, first two are 99%, but when we think about solutions or how, you know, strategic approach is going forward, you know, there are some cases where kind of a speed trap approach may be the, the right way to go. You need to understand that in those types of, in specific customer, what all do they have? Because we've seen a, lot, a number of cases where they have multiple of these tools. So a marketing organization will you know, go out and make a deal with a, one of the web analytics vendors because it's quick and dirty and they can get their basic marketing analytics, on, online analytics done pretty quickly and they like that. And then, again, they don't have to do a, deal with a mess of data. But you also, you know, in many cases you still have internal logs because for site optimization or site uh, you know, user experience or fraud, you know, they like to pull sets of that web log data and analyze that. So, when you go in and you know, work with a customer, you have to understand that there may be multiple sources. And uh, I think where we're in many companies where we're at today is they realize they have many sources and there's, some of them are beginning to say, uh, maybe we should reset and have a more holistic and comprehensive uh, web analytics strategy. One, to not have multiple tools, but the other is to what what other processes do we need to bring this data into? Tied to customer, tied to transaction, tied to calls, whatever. Is. So we need to take a step back and say we need a more holistic and strategic approach to collection, analyzing web logs. So if they're in that, that point, then the opportunity is to go in and help build out that the strategy, help build out how we should be going forward with this stuff and see if we can come up with a, an approach that better fits that larger need across the company. So 
kind of shifting on to the, the next part of this is uh, one of the one of the big issues uh, with web data and some of its perception, some of its real is volume. Most companies would like to integrate that data with their other customer data and transaction data and bring it in their data warehouses. They're reluctant to do it because of two reasons, the volume and the messiness, uh, because it's unknown data um, to a lot of IT departments. So using an example of Omniture site catalyst, since we've done a number of projects, when we implemented the adapters, we implemented them very efficiently. So the example I walked through is a company we did a project for. They had they have 45 million page views a day. The estimate of the size of the pure raw log files, uncompressed, no processing, their estimate was 14 terabytes a year, which obviously scares a lot of people because that's just a lot of data. But when we did the design, we brought into Teradata, we did three things, right? We, we looked at the data, looked at the data fields and elements, understood the business, what data should be brought in, and have eliminated unneeded or probably more importantly, redundant data fields. Second thing we did was what we normally do is we normalize the data, reduce a lot of the redundancy. And the third thing, we use their data compression to further reduce the size. So what we ended up at the end of the day is a size of between three and four terabytes per year, which is less than a third of or around a third of the original estimate. So you can deal with, at 45 million pages a day, three terabytes are more palatable than 14 terabytes. And so the data from a pure web analytics you know, company perspective, the data is not as large as, as I think many people initially think it is. And so that's an important point when we're trying to get the folks to integrate data with their other data. The other opportunity is, is because, for example, the page view data is at the most detailed level, uh, there are strategies and approaches that say, uh, you know, I can archive after 120 days or whatever period you take to further um, limit the growth or the size of the data while you're getting all the other benefits of looking at the visits and all this, all the other aspects you want to run or I want to analyze. The other message from kind of a, just a pure Teradata perspective is for web analytics companies, the Omnitures, WebTrends, and Core Metrics, we, they're partners of ours. So the way we want to position this to the customers is that the reporting, the aggregate reporting, the user interfaces that these companies have are really nice for that marketing report or that operational report or the departmental reporting, and it's real time. So you know, we want to make sure that our, the customers, the clients, you know, realize that, yeah, we continue using that. That's a good thing. The reason... We, we don't want to bring the data in are two. One is uh, integration with the, the rest of your data, your customer data, your transaction data, uh, your product data. If the sites are tagged well, we can integrate that, what's going on in the site with each of those. The other one is if we're bringing in raw tail data, now you have the power of more advanced analytics. You, know, you now set to run, you know, obviously, hardcore SQL or SAS or any of the much more sophisticated advanced analytic tools against that data in a graded environment.